You know you want to watch us instead of CNN's coverage. It's not going to change. Though, ABC's while, coverage. So yeah. Who knows what's happening? I don't know. Are we live? Are we already live? We are live. 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 Oh, there we go. There we be live. In. We're going to try to go for one week That's in a row with no audio problems. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put a sign up that shows how many days. <laughs> Number of. Oh, we've got two people joining us. Let well, us know if you can hear us. At least we only need a uh, single digit. We don't have to put double digits up on that board. <laughs> yeah, we really only need like one through probably what, two? Yeah. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh. Yeah, we probably should definitely have a zero up there. Betsy's watching with us. We've got a couple more people logging on. Hello, hello. See, our live feed's going to be more popular than yeah. than it's others. I don't know. They, they haven't answered that yet. Let us know. Let us know. Can you hear us? Our mouths are moving. <laughs> Can you hear us? No, we're not going to play any ACDC. He, he's learning how to use the Bluetooth. He's, he's learned so much this week. You'll notice our um, Christmas so Eve survey. So we have, right now we have a survey out there for Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. That's on the web page. It is? Home page? Um, I think it will be sometime. If it hasn't been already, it will be. Um, and we also have a form out there for you to order your poinsettias for Christmas Eve. That's not out there yet, but it will be. It will be. I don't, uh, it will be in next week's weekly Wednesday for sure. It'll be on the website probably by the end of today. Yeah. Um, it'll be in the bulletin. Um, no, it won't be in the bulletin. The bulletin's already done. It'll be out there. It'll be out there. We cannot hear Phil. All right. So let me. <laughs> See, you check two things and there's a third thing. I'll just talk amongst myself. Yeah, I was like, um, not singing. I was trying to think what I could do. Monologue. Monologue. Uh, can't hear well at all. Can't hear pastor. Okay, can you hear Russ and I? How about now? How about now? You know, we could probably put the earphones on and actually hear what other people are hearing. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can yes. everybody else hear you? Russ is better. <laughs> you win. I want to I hear that every day. <laughs> I'm just a little better. Just a little just better. Just eventually, little better. I'll get to adequate. <laughs> Hopefully, you can hear me now, but when I checked it before, my light was going up and... Okay. So I was okay. All right, so we're but getting a yes. We can hear Belinda and Russ well. Can you hear Pastor now? Because can you hear me now? <laughs> he'll do his announcement again about the survey because yeah, I probably so, didn't hear that. So it was pretty. You know, I learned. I've learned new tricks, and uh, we have a survey out there for um, your input as to how Christmas Eve is going to look. Because you know, last year we had 130 some people if not with more, two services. with two services. Um, so that obviously goes a little bit above and beyond what we could handle um, with the current restrictions. So we're trying to see who's going to come to worship, who's going to continue to worship virtually so that we can kind of plan. And then also the other thing that is on there is when do you prefer to come? So we have 7, 8, and 9.30 on the list. And right now, 7 is, is predominantly what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. so. so if we, are, if, if we get a, um, a safe number of people responding that want to, to attend in person, then we'll just have that one service. Correct. And we will live stream that service so you Correct. can still worship with us at the same time or later in the day, whatever fits with your yep. um, schedule. And, and we may, you know, also do something, we're still kind of chatting about maybe posting something at midnight, just maybe a yeah. hymn and a verse or something. Something. Just so that people 
can we can experience. celebrate Christmas. Right. And then there's there's a cert, there's a a form that will be coming out for you to order um, your poinsettias, either red or white. So look for that to come out as well. And I think that's. That's most of our announcements. I think so. Yeah. Cool. And I hear the bells ringing. For whom the bell tolls. <laughs> it tolls for, for thee. thee. It tolls <laughs> for thee. So what are we chatting about today, sir? So I feel like it's going to be angry Jesus. Week. There, there is some angry, angry Jesus going Jesus. on. And, you know, every now and again, we do need a little bit of angry Jesus. But you, f you find a lot more of angry Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. Because mm. that there there is a lot of angry Jesus there, and you know that's okay. Um, I think some of that is for us to really kind of take stock in what it is that we're doing, and are, you know, are we really are we really doing what Christ has asked us to do in our lives? Are we? Well, let's back up. What are, what are we what are we looking at today? So we're looking at the final discourse. <laughs> which is what I was talking about, right? Uh, which is typically found in Matthew 23, 24, and 25. And it's commonly referred to as the Olivet Discourse. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because most of the time, Jesus is talking to the disciples or the people or the Pharisees from Mount Olivet while wow. he has a view of the temple. Okay. Um, in the other Gospels, in, in this discourse, it's sometimes taken from inside the temple, but in Matthew, it's, it's where he's up on Mount Olivet and speaking to the masses. Well, I'll have to admit that um, the Facebook advertisement that went out for this only included the readings for 23 I know, you and 25. Me. I totally skipped 24, so... Um, well, see, I had to do a lot more work today because <laughs> I had focused on 24, so... <laughs> So I had to do some work on 23 and 25. That's okay. I totally skipped reading 24 myself. So, um, I so did I. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I got so, some notes on the other two. You know, so maybe, work it out. maybe we'll, you know, extend that into next week some too. Who knows? Anyway. I think we well, can handle it. So in, in, in as, 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 uh, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so if, if we look at Matthew, tw if we start out in Matthew 23, Matthew 23 is really where, um, Jesus is calling out the Pharisees and the scribes mm -hmm. where he's, you know, saying, yes, you're teaching the right things. You know, you, you are giving the people what they are supposed to hear, but you're not living that life. So you, you're, you, you've put yourself on a pedestal above everyone else and, you know, you're not really giving the people what it is. I'm, you're not, you're not, you're not setting the, the good example. There you go. That's kind of, you're not walking the, the walk. You're just talking that's the right. talk. That's right. I mean, there's, there's one, um, there's some great lines in this one too. There are some great lines in here. Well, expound Probably on them. One of my favorites, you strain a gnat, but swallow a camel. Strain a gnat, but swallow a camel. Yeah. Hmm. You're going to pick on something small for someone else and pick that out in their lives and, you know, swallow a whole camel that's, when it's something yeah. that's referring to yourself. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, one of the, one of the things that Jesus points out in, in the 23rd chapter is the phylotactories. Ah, that's yes. a big word for today. Yeah, okay. I know what it Could is. Could I have the um, country of origin? <laughs> Spell it. Spell it. So th those were are typically back in that day. They were they were small pouches that the faithful either wore on their forearm or, or, or on their forehead that kept um, the commandments, so that you always had a reminder of that. And what Jesus has pointed out to um, the scribes and the Pharisees is, that, hey you've really gone way overboard in adorning these things and long tassels and fine embroidery and what's, and it really takes away from what they're supposed to be. It's supposed to be for you a gentle reminder of how God acts within you instead of how you act outside of God. 
Do you know what? Do you know what verse is that from? <sighs> that that that's told you. I, that's been a part of my um, continual uh, Bible study or devotion in the morning mm -hmm. was the 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 verses that told them from Deuteronomy to to where it. Oh, I did not know that. that. Well, thank you. It's Deuteronomy six four through nine. Just y'all want to look that up. <laughs> 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 Tells them to wear. You know, the, uh, on their forearms and their foreheads and write it on their door frames. Right, right. I I can't tell you it. I haven't memorized it. I look at it and read it every morning, but I don't. You don't remember. I don't have it memorized. Okay. It's the Hebrew, sh I'm probably saying that wrong, Shema, Shema. I don't know. It's Shema. The, like the morning prayer. Right, right. So the, the, one of the things is in this, in chapter 23 is, is how Jesus tells the disciples that you need to be a servant to all instead of just serving yourself. That um, was verses 11 and 12. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Mm -hmm. Jesus claims that the, you know, the Pharisees and the scribes are in their actions, not their teachings, in their actions, are really closing off the kingdom for themselves and for everyone else because they're really not practicing what they preach. Right, and <clears throat> this whole verse, it's almost, if you're in a leadership position, you should start by reading this because there's so many things that apply to that. You know, it starts out with, you know, you heap the weight on everybody else and don't carry any of it yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, you, you worry about all these little things with the gnat, but you don't worry about justice and mercy and faithfulness, which are the three main things that you should be concerned with, mm -hmm. you know. And every, you know, there's five or six different ones in there, and they're all relating to how you essentially lead people or teach. Right. And either way, if you keep those things in mind, it puts you in a much better space and, and it's not so much the teaching because jesus says you're teaching correctly right it's how you are exhibit not exhibiting but how you are modeling right. what you're teaching you know that's that's where you get it wrong you know because you're yeah you're telling everybody hey this is what you do and that's correct and you know but if you don't live it then it's worthless so my question was Jesus criticizing the individuals or what organized religion had become? He, he's criticizing the, the, the ones who are pontificating themselves, you know, mm -hmm. who are lifting themselves up above everyone else. So, you know, it would be like me saying, I'm better than you or you because look at me, I can teach you this, or, you know, look how I'm living and you're not living correctly. You know, you, you, you are not embodying what God wants you to do. You're not embodying the commandments that God has given you. So you can't be that example. Sure, you can teach me everything all day long, but unless you live that, it, it doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and that's lesson for us as well. It's not just for leaders or you know religious people it's, it's well, anybody that's a, pa <clears throat> that's yeah, I a gotta, parent is a leader so they have to you know so that i can't old, pull out my parent mantra do no, as i say not as i do no you can't that <laughs> that's no not, good anymore that's no good no way no <laughs> i'll have to get rid of that shirt <laughs> <laughs> how's that worked for you though mm. sometimes okay limited success you i know. would say <laughs> for myself anyway. well you go to your backup of yelling well, no. I, I do that. that yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so that's really what uh, Matthew 23 is all about. It's all about being the servant and being the faithful servant who embodies, who lives and preaches and does what he preaches. I like it. Good. Then my job is done. See ya. 23. Now 24 that none of us looked at except for Pastor Phil. <laughs> so, you know, in, in chapter 24, it really, there's a lot of talk about 
the end of age and judgment. You know, it talks really about, starts out with, because it, it, it's basically written after the, the temple and after Jerusalem have been destroyed. And it's, it's the end of time stuff, and it's, it's really um, saying Jesus is coming in there and saying, yes, this, this is what's going on, and, and, it, and it has the um, different topics of, you know, the Son of Man coming, you know, the, what, what was the correct term? Um, uh, oh, Philly. I forget the term. Um, It'll come to you. It'll it will. To you. It will That's at some point. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's it's also talking about you know how um, we're we're to live and you know kind of it's really describing the end of days. So the the one parable that's in there is the parable of the fig tree, where um, Jesus says, "When you see its leaves, you will know that it's summer." And it will be apparent that summer has come. So that's kind of a, you know, there there will be earthquakes, there will be pestilence, there will be wars, there will be discourse among nations, you know, hmm. a whole lot of. So what are we saying here? So we're, I think we're looking at what's going on today. <laughs> but that, but doesn't every generation think that it is, is the world you know, that's and, ending? And that's really what one of the things was here was why Matthew put this in here was because they thought that the coming of the Son of Man was going to be, you know, in their I- imminent, in their generation. Right. Right? In their generation. But um, some commentaries have said that generation can mean um, the generation of the faithful. So that would be us in continuance of that. Mm-hmm. We don't know... We don't know if the end of days is, is going to come while we're sitting here, while you're walking home or driving home, or if it's in another 2,000 years. Right. We don't really know. And but that's one of those things where you don't really need to worry about it. You just need to do what you're supposed to do, and then that'll sort itself out. Which kind of leads into chapter 25. Exactly. <laughs> Which I like a lot better. Yeah, let's just... <laughs> <laughs> And since I did not prepare 24, I have no questions to ask you about it. But, uh, but Does I think anybody out there have any questions about chapter 24? I, I think one of the things that we look at in chapter 24 is there, there are two different ways to look at it. You have it as judgment and the, the end of days has already come. It's already a past event that that great tribulation was the first century of Jerusalem. And mm-hmm. when... Um, the temple was destroyed that kind of marked the focus of God's focus on Israel and it broadened it to everyone everyone you know it was shared with the Gentiles it was shared with those things and you know the 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 prophecies of Jesus are are what has kind of catapulted that new I don't want to say ministry but that new life in Christ ahead so that, that kind of signified that. Um, but there's also people that believe that it's possible that it's a future event. It's stuff that we're seeing now may be leading to that. Um, and it's really um, where that part of it was the focus, where where God focused on Israel to kind of perpetuate them into the into the new era and that new era is where um we're going to be following you know christ's word where we where we are are taken in the world and it's not god's god's judgment on israel it's it's preparation for the return of the messiah so they're 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 a whole different you know kind of whole different things going on in chapter 24 that are it's kind of likened to a little apocalypse i was gonna say does that does this chapter it sounds to me like apocalyptic yes very much so scripture you know like daniel or revelation would be 
Yeah, and but that's where is, that's where Daniel and, and from you know, Jesus. The, the the desolation, that's the word I was looking for. See, we knew um, you'd find it. You know, was um, talked about in the book of Daniel and that desolation was when Rome came in and and put their mark in the temple, put their own idol in the temple. So that that's kind of uh, relates to what some say is the Antichrist because huh. that came in and that desecrated the temple and that's the beginning of the end because of that happened. And then the temple needed to be destroyed because it was defiled. Yikes. Yeah, crazy. That's a lot. That's a lot. There's a ton. There, I mean... The, these three chapters, you know, contain a lot. And then, you know, obviously chapter 26 is, you know, where we talk about the passion of Christ. But in 25, um, it, it talks about us. There are... Um, it's like preparation. Yeah, it's kind of... There's, there's four parables that are, are really played out in this, in this chapter. And, I only got you know, three. Hmm? I said, I only got three. Well, you got it wrong then. I missed one. You're missing a page? I'm missing a page. <laughs> so you have the parable of the wicked slave where the owner, the landowner, or the master goes away. Oh, the and, parable of the talents? And No. The wicked slave. The wicked slave. What yes. This is the one where they get the bag of money. No. no. That's the talents. No. The See? wicked slave is the one who is, when the master goes away, he put he gets this head slave, so to speak, gets put in charge of all the other slaves. Okay. And since the master or the Lord has kind of disappeared and hasn't been around for a while, he starts, you know, being the, you know, playboy of the era and uh. spending his money, drinking, drinking and eating all the food for the other slaves, beating the other slaves. And then all of a sudden the master shows up unannounced and He's kind of caught in a pickle. And I don't know where that is. is I guess it doesn't go well. <laughs> it doesn't go well. Doesn't There's go well. much weeping and gnashing of gnashing teeth. Gnashing of yes. teeth. There's always darkness. the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. <laughs> so, so the next parable in there is the parable of the bridesmaids. You know, the, or you know, some say virgins, some say whatever. But you'll have to tune in on Sunday to hear about that. Oh, that's the teaser for this. See? Thing. Or you could just... Crack open, or you could crack open the Bible and, and look it. at it. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's again, it's all about being prepared for the coming of the honored guest. You know, and 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 that's what we're called to do. We're called to just you know be vigilant and awake, and not sleeping. Not to step on your sermon or anything, because I didn't know that that was the gospel uh. for this week. But my problem with this one is. That half of the, you know, half of the, the virgins or bridesmaids were prepared and the other half weren't. And well, they were both like, prepared, too bad, but they so were... sad. You didn't have enough of your well, oil. You're going to go get yourself some. <laughs> right. Well, my whole, I got sort of a positive take on that. Okay, good. Well, not really positive for them. <laughs> oh. But <laughs> if you have something like a gift, okay, you have a, a gift that you have in doing something, don't waste it. You need to use it. You need to get it out there so right. that when the time comes, you know, right. you get rewarded for using that. And and a, and a hint to the sermon is that Luther equates the oil in the in the passage mm-hmm. to our faith. Mm. So I got to store it up in a jar. So no, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I can share my faith, but I can't give you my faith. See what I'm saying? Mm. So see the difference there? I'll have to tune in on Sunday to really you go You might deeper. have to tune in on Sunday because I still have to figure out how to write it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, almost well, there. Invoke the spirit on that one. <laughs> but yeah, that's really what it is. It's about how do we use our gift of faith? You know, are we going to be late to the party because we are too busy doing other things that we're, mm. we're not focusing on Christ in our lives. We're not focusing on doing, you know, serving our neighbor, feeding the sick, or feeding the, the hungry, taking care of the sick, putting clothes on people who need it. Are we 
that group of people who are not prepared because the we sheep or the goats. That's that's and then, later. That's later on. I'm getting to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Why do goats get such a bad rap? I don't know. I don't They're know. so cute, those fainting ones. Anyway. <laughs> so then, then you have the parable of the talents. Right. Right. So the one, the one worker is given five talents, another two, and another one. And there's the, the, the lord of the manor says, I must go away. And, you know, so the first, first worker does invests and does all sorts of things and doubles his money. Mm -hmm. The second worker does the same. The third worker, knowing that the master of the house is kind of wrathful and um, whatever, just buries it. And instead, you know, there, so he doesn't gain anything. He just, and he comes back and the master of the house you know, says to the first one, well done, excellent, you've, you've um, invested in, in me wisely and you, you've taken what I have given you and have shared that and done different things. Same thing with the second one. And with the third one who didn't do anything, the master's a little upset because he gave him, it's kind of the way I look at it is I, I've given you grace through faith. So if I don't use that, then I'm wasting it, and 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 I'm not I'm not doing what you know God wants us to do in the world. I'm not sharing that with even if I were to you know put it in the bank. You know, there's still something that I could do with it. You know, I would still mm. earn, so to speak. All right. So the talents is faith. That's what you're saying. I, I think all of this is faith. It's it's really <laughs> you know one faith, trick pony. Faith, you know. <laughs> faith and salvation. Yeah. Really, you know, it's 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 God's saving grace coming to us through our faith and and how it is that we use our faith in the world. How you know, and I and I've struggled with this a little bit with the the ten bridesmaids because you know you look and you're like, oh yeah, well I can share my faith and I can. I can do things that are, you know, pleasing to God with what I have, with my oil, um, but I can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. It's something that you have to have inside yourselves. Well, that's the other thing, you know, you need the works to go with the faith. So a lot of this is don't go hide and, you know, and be scared to, to go out and do something. You know what I mean? You don't have to do anything big, but you need to get out and, you know, put yeah. it on account. Do a little bit. And, and that's what, and you know, you're killing my sermon for this week. So I think. Is we're enhancing it. This is sermon <laughs> enhancement. Sermon <laughs> enhancement. Exactly. So, so I, I think that's exactly what we're being called to look at. You know, as members of this church body, are you just coming into church, being fed, and leaving? That's okay. That's you showing up with your lamp. That's that's you being there, okay? With your one talent, or, or with your, your one ta with, with your with your talents, right? But are you a member of council? Are you on a, you know a ministry team? Are you involved with the youth? Are you involved when we have projects in the church? Um, are you involved more than just coming? Yeah, and it could even be a prayer chain. It could be something mm -hmm. simple like that. If you Absolutely. can't physically do it, 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 it could it, really be just about anything. It's not as long a, as you're involved somehow. It, it, and it's not a heavy lift. It's how are you comfortable, right? And are you comfortable with, um, well, I know technology, so I could maybe do this, or I know finance, and I could maybe do that, or I know how to put in a bathroom. That's those, and those are grand projects. Those are big things. But cleaning up the church after worship, um, you know, just... Just reading and participating in a Bible study and then talking about it later. Right. I think I mean, is also... Sharing that. Again, yeah. sharing your faith with whoever will listen. You know, you know I talked a couple of weeks ago, and, and it hasn't 
you know, born fruit yet, but maybe it will, was, you know, someone talking to a, a, a family outside. If you share the good news, that's, your, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do. And that, and that kind of gets me along the lines. When you're watching virtually uh, either these discussions or you're watching virtually in a church, share. Share it with your friends, you know, so that it gets out there. And it's as simple as that. You, you push a button and it goes. If people don't want to see it, then they don't have to look at it. But you have been that impetus then to be Christ in the world, to, mm-hmm. to share the good news with those who may not necessarily get it. And we never know. I mean, you and I were talking about the potential for another person this past week right? Mm-hmm. Remember? It's all about just saying, hey, this is what I have to offer. I'm sharing my faith with you. Are you coming with your lamp? Or are you going to come with extra oil? Are you investing your talents? Are you investing your talents? Or are you just keep burying going back them? to that sermon. You, I don't want to. Well, I'm there it already. <laughs> it's already. Now I got to go rewrite it. Now I got to go rewrite it. <laughs> well, let's see. Our audience of five we'll <laughs> have to try not to spoil it for everyone else but it'll be okay so yeah i mean our audience of five hit share you never know what will happen right hopefully you aren't technologically you know inept like some of us and, <laughs> no and it'll actually work hey this is great but why isn't there any sound why isn't there any sound but but that's the thing we you know we but we're as, still learning and growing we as faithful stewards in Christ are accountable for what God has given us. And we're accountable for sharing it. You know, we're accountable for taking care of it. You know, for stewarding it. I feel like, you know, you're getting to these parables that, that are easily, more easily grasped. But when you look at it in the context of chapter 23 and the woes and then chapter 24 and the end of age, it, it leans a little more heavily so the, and more important when you read it in the, con, you know, the context of those two chapters. That's really, Getting through those that's filters, really the like, way, end of time, people. That's really the way I look <laughs> at it. And, it, and it, what it's saying is in the end of time, you don't want to be late. You don't want to be, oh, Forgot my oil. Well, that's <laughs> also with you know forgiveness, either giving it or receiving it, that doesn't really work after the door is closed. That's you know right. What I mean, so you need to get out yeah. ahead of that. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of the one good of the, imagery. I like it. That's one of the things I talked about in in our Bible study with local pastors on on Tuesday was. So how do I preach this? Do I, do I come in and say, listen, if you don't get your act together, you're gonna, the door's going to close and Christ is going to, you know, the bridegroom's going to be on the inside and you're going to be standing out there going, what happened? Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, what do you say? What do you say? So what did but, this group but of so, come up so, with? So what, what I'm coming up with is what you're going to hear on Sunday. Oh, okay, right. Shh, shh. Sheep and goats. What we... Yeah. What about sheep and goats? What about sheep and goats? So because this again, is one that's an end. Of, that's an end of uh, you know end of times parable as well, where you know we will all be brought before Christ in the in the in the time of judgment, and Christ will determine as the final judge who's worthy to come into the kingdom, and. Wh- why they chose goats or sheep, I don't know. Maybe because sheep are easily flocked. It's probably one there. of those hoof things. You know, you probably got to dig into some Leviticus or something <laughs> to figure out why probably. goats are on the I mean, bottom. I'm pretty sure I, I, I remember some class in seminary that we talked about that, but uh, probably my parables class. Probably. <laughs> but, but that's the thing, you know, and which it, separated it, it, those sheep and goats? What, what? Exactly what we've been talking about. The same thing. It's, mm-hmm. it's about how you act in this earthly realm. You know, are, are you, have you truly taken Christ into your heart? Have you truly taken God to you? And it, are you welcoming the Holy Spirit to allow to to guide you in doing the works that Christ needs in the world? Heavy. Duty. <laughs> 
So, yeah, I mean, that, that's really, really what these three chapters are about. They're, they're the kind of the closure that Jesus is saying, listen, I'm about to where I need to be in Jerusalem. You need, you need to get right with the world. You need to get right with me. And he's to the head slap and phase where he's yeah. done all the nice, nice talk. Now you get cuffed. I really need, well, or, you know, the, Pay attention. again, that but impending. It, but, it, but he doesn't really do that. I mean, yes, he, you know, he's kind of, you know, there's a lot of woes, woes, there. lot of woes but, you know, <laughs> there's it, a lot of, you're a bunch of vipers the, and all that kind of stuff. So there's a, tr- he's there, a little rough on A little, a little harsh. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think, I think it's truly easy for us to do what these, you know, these parables are asking us to do. It, it's not a heavy lift. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Check. Check. So, so what, what, okay, so we're, we, we talked about practically what we can do. We're, we're, we're For at our 30 time. minutes, yeah. yeah. So do we want to talk about practicality of how we can put these discourses how about we do that next week? Or what are okay. we doing next week? Uh, we, well, we we hadn't we figured we were going to do something, but I as I was going through <laughs> these chapters, and since you omitted the one, I've you know we we, we can continue this discussion next week about certain. All things. right, so we're going to look we'll at twenty four and actually it read it. Well, I don't. I I, th- I think we we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We're going to continue. Um, they're really only, we're already in t- well into November, and we've been going through the book of Matthew this whole year. Correct? Yeah, uh, year A is Matthew, and then next year will be Mark. Which and, we'll, and we're wrapping up. Matthew is ending the last, yep, 22nd the la- of November is yep. the last Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mark will be very short to the point. Yeah, Mark it is. is. It is very short to the point. Yeah. So but we'll delve into that when the time comes. So just a couple more weeks of Matthew, and we'll finish out your yep. A's, right? And hopefully, for those of you who've turned in, this has so far been worthwhile, and we really appreciate your input. And mm-hmm. um, if you have suggestions for us, please let us know. Yep. And worst case, I think we're enjoying it. Yeah, I think we're having <laughs> fun We're together. learning stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I'm still... I. Even one of the devotions I did this morning is, you know, had, uh, it had, me, had helped me think out a, a different perspective on things. Right. You know, just feeding yourself with the word is like my big, huge thing of 2020. And, and, and that's really what, <laughs> for me, you know, kind of looking at the different commentaries for the lectionaries mm-hmm. helps me see different perspectives and yeah. You know, how does it fit into my life and how do I, how does the Holy Spirit come to me and allow me to share that with you? Yeah. And you can, and it reminds you to look at things, you know, stop and look. Because I noticed a couple times this week I heard myself and I was like, mm, I might be a little myopic on that one. I may <laughs> need to step back. And I was a little off. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to put it through the Jesus filter. And if you're not holding up that Jesus filter to see what that filter is. Sometimes you can wander a little bit off the path. Right. And sometimes, you know, it may not be bad for you to wander off the path just to realize that mm-hmm. I need to get back on the path. Yeah, right. Yes. It depends which direction. Well, <laughs> and I mean, if you can do that, you know, you, you know, uh, everybody's offering you grace and you offer yourself grace to say, hey, I, I messed up. I'm wrong there. Yeah, I said the prayer twice. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody even notice that? It's been five days. Get over it. <laughs> no, but thank you for joining <laughs> us and hope to see you Sunday. See you.